because the Bible said not a bone in his body would be broken according to prophecy. And all that for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by or with his stripes, his stormy bruising, we were already and we are by decree and our DNA healed. We bounce back from destruction and the brink of hell. I shall not be moved. It's like a tree planted by the water. So let's take heart. Let's stiffen our chin, stick out our, uh, our chest, knowing that the hurricanes of life, the hurricanes of life, church, need semicord. You see that wolf commercial in the COPD commercial where he can't build a little piggy's houses in and he needs semicord? And so the hurricanes of life need semicord, semicord to take us down. So much for the turbulent, windy seasons. What about in our dry seasons? In the windy season, we like a palm tree. The winds blow and whatnot, and we bend and we go all the way over, but we come back because God has programmed us like that palm tree, spiritually so. So that's the windy season, but what about the dry seasons? My dry time experiences, when it seems nothing is going on, and I'm there in the house. Things have dried up, and I am seemingly physically exhausted and famished and thirsty. There is a tree in the natural called the mesquite tree. This tree is a thorny, low shrub with four inch long spikes and eight inch fruit like pods, as with the honey mesquite. It grows in dry climates, needing little water, and in deserts too hot and dry for other plants to grow in. It is common in the southwestern United States, Mexico, South America, and the Hawaiian Islands. When it has plenty of water, it can grow from essentially a shrub into a large tree 50 to 60 feet high with a trunk three feet across. People use it for fuel, fence posts, and to erect buildings. The seeds or beans serve as cattle or horse food, and gum from the tree is used to make candies and Mexican dyes. The mind-boggling thing about this shrub to tree is its tap root. Listen to this. Its tap root can burrow down as far as it needs, even as far as 200 feet below ground to find water. The roots can regenerate if the tree is chopped off from above, making this tree one tough tree to get rid of. In 1979, the director of the Great Plains Museum in Wadden, Oklahoma, named Steve Wilson, reported witnessing mesquite tap roots that were a phenomenal 175 feet long. Those roots were programmed to seek water no matter how far away the water was. Talking about deeper in the word of God, take me down deeper. We have that spiritual mesquite nature. Psalm 63, 63 and 1 says, I earnestly seek God, thirsting for him with my whole being, longing for him in a dry and parched land where there is no water. Those are our dry seasons. Isaiah 41 and 17 through 19 says, The poor and needy with parched tongues search for water, and that the God of Israel is making rivers on barren heights and springs within the valleys. For our dry, barren, parched land experiences, my spiritual mesquite nature is programmed to sink my roots as deep as it takes to seek and soak up the water of his life-giving and sustaining word. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. Psalm 42 and 1 comes readily to the mind that says, Just as the deer is programmed to pant after the horn brooks, even so do our souls pant after the living water, the wellspring of life. Look at God's lessons in nature by his wisdom or his decree, his command, his word. Because Psalm 33 and 9 says, For he spoke and it came to be. He commanded it and it stood firm. And it never does. As the old song said goes, he's water in dry places and food in a starving land. So thus far we've dealt with the trees that span and withstand the wind and rain as well as the mesquite tree in our dry seasons. But I was researching, Brother Brad, to satisfy my curiosity as to whether there are trees that are fire resistant. And to my surprise, I discovered there are at least seven such trees. Among them, the giant sequoia, or the redwood that together with the sugar pine tree has a thick fireproof bark. And the sugar pine may survive as long as 500 years. The Japanese elm planted widely in Japan as a street tree and introduced to the United States in 1895 is the most fire resistant tree. I discovered that in forest fires, a large layer of charcoal remains on a living tree so that it gets scorched. And over time, it is enveloped by a layer of new growth creating fire scars which provides a history of the tree to determine the time of the very fire. 
So in our spiritual DNA, we may pass through the fire, a la Isaiah 43, but we will not be burned. Amen. The flames will not set us ablaze. We'll not be consumed because we have asbestos suits, spiritual flame retardant gear. One tree in an Ohio fire was found to have burned from the inside out due to the moisture content of the tree held just below the bark. The adversary of our souls may use the tornadoes as he did in Job's children's housing disaster by such, or he may use the fires, the Hebrew boys, in the fiery furnace, or he may use drugs. And when all else fails, what about coming in like a flood, the perfect storm? So like the palm tree, we deal with the wind and the rains. And then in the dry season, we let the spiritual mesquite tree. So the adversary's well says, I'll tell you what, I'm going to flood them. So he comes in like a flood, but the Lord will lift up a standard against him, Isaiah 59 and 19. And what is that standard? In Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 22, we read, Should you not fear me, declares the Lord, should you not tremble in my presence? I made the sand a boundary for the sea, an everlasting barrier it cannot cross. Did you get that? The waves may roll, but they cannot prevail. They may roar, but they cannot cross it. Remember, God commanded, and it stood firm. Remember we read that earlier? earlier? We see God put a decree in every grain of sand, tiny as it is, commanding it giving it the authority, the wherewithal to contain the vast, much more powerful, mighty ocean within the boundaries that God assigned for it. After the ocean roils, churns, and storms, the sands by design rains the ocean in, and the sand the ocean know it by his decree at creation. They both know what the command was at the beginning of creation. Isn't that fabulous? The boisterous, mighty, and proud waves of the vast ocean, though it roars and talks a mighty game, must humble itself into the sand border patrol's authority as the standard against it. Wow. Have you noticed the sandbags used in floods and rainstorms, surges and tides? Look at Job chapter 38 and verses 8 through 11. God speaking to Job. Who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness? When I fixed limits for it and set its doors and bars in place? When I say to I commanded, thus far, this far you may come and no farther. Here's where your proud waves halt. So our spiritual sand DNA and our father nature, Father's nature in us is that standard raised by his authority against the enemy. When he comes in like a flood, God sets that standard, that sand, the spiritual sand barrier programmed in us against him and contains that flood. And that flood, that mighty ocean has to obey the authority of that sand. Isn't that something by God's decree? God said, you come this far from the beginning of time and no further. Wow, look at how awesome God. So after all of the tempestuous waves, the waters by God's decree must return to its boundaries. The sand holds fast as assignment ever on God, on duty. The sand is the enforcer in the rainy, flooding seas of life, when it seems we'll be swept away, when it seems we'll be overcome, when it seems we'll be swallowed up, when I think I'm going under, but God's word stands fast. God programs it into us. So in my rainy seasons, in my windy seasons, my awesome all-season God has already programmed into me that same thing with you. He's already programmed into you that palm tree nature. We may bend, we may go all the way down. But we'll stand back up again. Amen. We may bend, but we'll not be broken. Amen. And then when the enemy says, well, I'll try something else there, and I'm going to give them the dry seasons yet and all of that, we will send our tap roots down as far as it needs to go, 200 feet below. Roots 175 feet long, whatever, to at the deer points for the water, the living water, so we would do that too. God will meet us in our dry seasons. Amen. What a mighty God. And then when the floods come, like the perfect storm, and I saw that movie some years ago, the perfect storm may come, the enemy comes in like a flood. God has already programmed that spiritual sand barrier nature in us. And though there's little grains of sand, that mighty ocean talk a big game. I'm gonna roll, I'm gonna take you in, I'm gonna take, but it, that little authority. You know one thing, when a little old, the policeman, 
You can take a little crossing guard. She can weigh 85 pounds. And you can have these tractor trailers out there. She doesn't have the power to stop it like Hercules or anybody to stop that thing. But she has what? The authority. If she raises her hand, she has the authority of the city and the state, the municipality behind her. So you can, and that's the way we are. Though the ocean is mighty and it roars bigger and talks a big game, the little sand's already got that authority. And the sand says, God programmed you. You know what it is. I'm the crossing guard here. You've got to stop right there. Right. And I'm awesome God. That's right. Am I the only one getting excited today? Amen. Come on. I'm talking about our all-season awesome Father. Our all-season. He's there for every season. That encourages me. Yeah. The psalmist in Psalm 119.89 quotes, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Amen. Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Thou hast established the earth and it abideth, continual tense of that word, abideth. Verse 91, they continue this day according to thy ordinances. And we said in, yes. in Proverbs 8, God did it all before the earth was. He did it all by what? By wisdom. Mm -hmm. Before there was the world, his wisdom said, I was there Amen. in the beginning. Amen. I'm the one that did it. God said decree before we were ever born. God said before this church was ever established, God looked down a lot of time and says, already in the life, in life, I've already put the boundaries. As he told Job, I put the boundaries for the waters. This is your boundary. This is how far you go, no further. Good. I programmed the palm tree. Everything that is, by my wisdom, I did it. And he told us in 2 Peter, as we said again, God has already given us everything we need. We already have it. And like I said, I had the GPS and all the information I needed. And I got lost sometimes and didn't even use the thing. Didn't know how to use it. So sometimes we fall because we don't know the word or we don't know how to use the word. And some don't believe it, but that doesn't make it not true because you don't believe it or because you didn't read it. It's there. It was there for me all the time. I didn't use it. I'm running around like a chicken head with his head cut off, getting lost, turned around. And the thing was got me all the way. Go down here, make a left. I went past it like I said to him, make a U turn. I'll tell you where to turn. Check which street. Lord, I said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Woo, that make me happy. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. So we have a God that's our all season wonderful God. We serve a great, big, wonderful God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. You establish the earth and it abides. And they continue this day according to thy ordinances, for they are all, now look at, look at, for they are all thy servants. The water, the wind, the sand, the fire, circumstances, so forth and so on. And finally, verse 92 says, unless thy law or your decrees had been my delights, I should then have perished in my affliction. End the quote. But by his decrees, you see, God's got me. Yep. God's got you. Yep. God's got your family. I'm not swallowed up. I'm not defeated. And I pray that the settled word in heaven, your word being forever settled in heaven, his will, that is, that it be done in earth as it already is in heaven. I want to conclude with Psalm 46, 1 through 3. God is our refuge and strength. Amen. And ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, in all of that church, I shall not be moved. Amen. Just like those trees planted by the living water, because I have an awesome, all weather, all season, like the tires God. I serve a great, big, wonderful God. Thank you for the privilege of your time. Remember, church, to grow in grace, lest you groan in disgrace. I'm Ronald Hogan, and I approve this message. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Amen. <laughs>